Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I uh, hope you've all got your church clothes on, you know, your pyjamas, and you've got something to eat and snack on, and you've got your slippers on. It's, uh, it's a great morning, and uh, Denise and I just want to take this opportunity to say hello to everybody, and uh, welcome to our online church today. God bless you. I want to get straight into the Word of God today. The title of my message is, So You Need a Miracle. It's not surprising how the current circumstances have put us into a situation where we are in need of miracles on a regular basis. Hey, we pray and desire so much from God to move in our lives like right now. As a pastor, I see this up front and it touches my life as well. Thank God Denise and I are both doing well. We're untouched by COVID-19 and we're both in good health. With good health, You could be expected to just take life easy, sleep in, go for your daily walk, hope for better days, maybe even allow yourself the luxury to complain about the restrictions. You know, uh, one of the things that I've been doing over this last couple of weeks is, is probably catching up on about 10 decades, sorry, 10 years worth of sleep. However, this crisis takes on a different, more frightening tone when it touches our own personal lives. When you have a a mum or a dad or a a wife or a husband testing positive, you discover the the reality of it all, that it can come crashing down very quickly. We have a number of uh, our church family who have tested positive for COVID-19. Some have been admitted to hospital. The reality of it hits us hard. Now we're all praying, believing God for healing. But the reality is, it's a bit in your face, isn't it? It's a bit up close and personal. During these crazy days, I'm sure you've had many opportunities to pray, asking God for your miracle. Maybe it's a financial miracle you need, employment, or the healing of a relationship. Whatever you need, I want to encourage you that God is a God of miracles. Scripture encourages us that nothing is impossible for God. Knowing this, that God desires to meet your need and bring breakthrough to your life is an encouragement for each and every one of us. I want to read to you uh, a scripture which I read on Tuesday night. I want to pick it up again. Uh, It tells the story of a great miracle where Jesus fed 5,000 people with a little boy's lunch. The biblical account is found in all four of the gospel accounts and cements itself in history as a powerful miracle. It gives each of us today the inspiration and faith to believe that God not only knows my need, but is able to meet my need and bring breakthrough. Let me read this passage to you. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. As soon as Jesus heard the news, uh, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowd heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote area and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can... Go to the villages and buy some food for themselves. But Jesus says, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. And then he took the people and he told them to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes. He looked up to heaven towards God and he blessed them. And then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. So this was a huge crowd. Now a couple of things to notice. Number one, the people were hungry, and there was a need. Now the the alternative was not that harsh. It wasn't really that bad. They could all go home, they could finish the day's teaching and miracles, Or they could stay and receive more from Jesus. But a need had arisen. The people started to get hungry. Jesus knew this. He wasn't oblivious to the needs that they were experiencing. And we all face these various kinds of needs. Excuse me. Those needs can be spiritual, emotional, financial, mental health needs, physical needs. We could be at sickness, hunger, warmth, thirst. Hey, the list goes on. But there are some needs more important than others. Let me repeat that. There are some needs more important than others. And we all juggle this question regularly. There was a man called Abraham Maslow, an American psychologist who was best known for creating a study on the hierarchy of needs. 
In his scholarly report, he, he proposes that there were, there were five levels of need, ranking and importance. It was his assertion that human need begins with physical need as a priority, culminating in what he calls self-actualization, or if we were to use biblical terms, discovering our purpose and destiny. His teaching is interesting in that it understands what motivates us as human beings. So our concern should be that we need to beware of, of, of following or allowing particular needs to take precedent over others and to distract us. Because in the long term, they define us and they direct our responses. So take care. You don't allow your response to a need to begin to characterize your life. Some needs can go unfulfilled for a time, like the need for a haircut. Some needs are just not as urgent or important than other needs. Your need for daily exercise is important, but going to the gym at this point in time is not. Be careful. Don't allow a less important need to grab your attention and lead to distraction. You can get angry. You can become, I don't know, insulting. You can become sarcastic. These kinds of distractions cause us to focus on less important things that literally stir us up. I think the disciples got distracted by a reasonable need, but it was a distraction nonetheless. Jesus seemed to not see the situation as the disciples did. Maybe it was more personal for them. I don't know. Maybe the disciples were hungry. Maybe it was getting too late for them. Maybe they wanted to go to bed and have a sleep. I mean, they'd seen so many miracles of healing in their three years at that hangout with Jesus. Maybe they were just getting a bit too familiar with it all. Just wanted to go home. Jesus had other ideas, though. Was this miracle mainly for the crowds? Or was it, for more, was it more personal for his disciples? I'll let you decide. In Matthew 14, 15, as the evening approaches, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. It's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves for, for some food. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. This was a perfectly reasonable bit of advice from the team. It wasn't unreasonable for the disciples to suggest it's time to wrap things up and send these dear folk home. It wasn't an unreasonable request that they were making to Jesus. The fact was they didn't have the food on hand required to feed all of these people. It was not unreasonable to direct them to go home because no one there had the money to feed everyone present. It wasn't unreasonable. These people were hungry, tired. They'd been in the meeting with Jesus for hours. It was obviously time to go home. Or was it? Listen to Jesus' response. Matthew 14 verse 16. They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. I can feel the disciples going, what? It was this unreasonable request of Jesus that was now pushing them. Little did the disciples know it was pushing them to another level of faith. Now, to overcome the mundacity proposed by that which is merely the reasonable, you can only do so by faith. So you overcome mundacity and the reasonable by faith. If Jesus was teaching us anything, he was pushing us to live at another level of faith. It was the need to eat that pushed them to that next level. It was, it was need that inspired them to look for a miracle. Jesus was using a human need to push his disciples, his team, to see heaven's response. Now remember, Jesus was constantly stretching and pushing his disciples to, to exert more and greater faith. Remember, it was Jesus who asked Peter to walk on water. It was need for more wine at a wedding feast that Jesus asked a group of servants to fill the water barrels with plain water just before he turned it into wine. Great miracle, hey? It was Jesus who said to Martha, stop all the fussing about. Sit here with me and your sister. It was Jesus who gave the crazy instruction to open a dead man's tomb four days after he had died. Let's be honest. Doubting Thomas, he was the most reasonable of all of the disciples. If you want to go to another level of faith, then you will be faced by the need to over overcome the unreasonable and allow the impossible to push you in faith. Jesus reminds us in this story that he is able to perform miracles. 
What was in Jesus' mind? Was there a reason Jesus wanted the people to hang around? Did he have a greater reason for keeping the crowd around? Was there more to all of this? Well, like walking on water and calming a storm, Jesus was inviting his disciples to discover ever more his miraculous power. This experience could lay down a historical count that would inspire billions, even 2,000 years later, to trust in him and exercise our faith. It's the unreasonable request that Jesus made that inspired faith in a miracle-working God. It's need that pushes us to believe for a miracle. Now, as we face these days, there are some things that can help us. Number one, don't be distracted by need. To be honest here, missing dinner to see and hear more of Jesus was no big deal. To forego a meal, to be healed and touched by heaven would have been worth it every time. And everyone there, let's remember, they were free to go home if they needed to. They were free to take their kids home, to feed them, put them to bed. But they didn't want to. The desire for them was to spend more time with Jesus. And this superseded the need to go and get food and put their kids to bed. <clears throat> I want you to take care that you don't allow need to lure you into situations that will rob you. Rob you of God's blessing. Some needs are more important than others. Be wise to discern the difference. Don't allow the urgent to rob you from the important. On my fridge, I have a sign. It says this, don't open this door, you're bored, not hungry. <laughs> well, what I think is hunger is actually a distraction from boredom. Challenging, isn't it? I was just telling the guys uh, a few minutes ago how my wife and I and I ate a whole packet of chocolate chip cookies. It's just terrible. Mind you, there's only eight in the packet, but I had six and she had two. I'm not hungry, I'm bored. Challenging, isn't it? Jesus realized the need of the crowd. He realized that it was hunger and he did meet their need, but he used that need to show his team another side of his divinity and his power. The presence of the need became an incredible opportunity for Jesus to perform a miracle. Don't be afraid of need. Number two, don't default to what is simply reasonable. Viewing life through the lens of what is always reasonable has the power to rob you of what God may have in store for you. Living this kind of life will eventually become the tasteless bread of mundacity and mediocrity. Instead, why not operate in the realms of faith? See what could happen if you lose the grip on what's just reasonable and believe him for what could be impossible. Discover the excitement of living by faith. Number three, don't balk at rising to an unreasonable request. This is what has the power to push you to another level. Now, when I'm working with my team, I know that some of the things which I'm asking them to do comes across at times as unreasonable. And I can imagine some of the internal dialogue that's going on in their heads. Wow, who does Tom think we are? I'm not Superman or Batman or any other of the Marvel superheroes, you know? Well, what, what's, he, what's he trying to do? Doesn't he know this is going to be really difficult? This is a truly unreasonable request. I'm sure the team that Jesus had also felt exactly the same. Recognize, though, faith is the currency of God's kingdom. And without it, you will not enjoy the fruits of its reward. Now, to experience God at a higher level in your life, you'll need to take deliberate steps of faith. Joshua marched around a walled city. Moses lifted his staff over the Red Sea. David used a stone and a slingshot to bring victory to his nation. Miracles rise above what we see as the reasonable. God's desire is to add his super to our natural, his extra to our ordinary. Believe God for a miracle. An unreasonable request is what inspires innovation and faith. So be inspired. Number four, don't assume you understand what God's doing. Wow, that's like, hello, you're God, I'm not. There's a scripture in Isaiah 55 and verses 8. It says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. It's so challenging, isn't it? God uses circumstances to reveal his greatness on our behalf. He is the one that causes all things to work together for good, for those of us called according to his purpose. God is a God of purpose, and everything he does, he does to reveal 
his greatness. Never assume that you could bring counsel to the Almighty. Trust and faith, these are the currencies of the kingdom. And we can do so in a very reasonable fashion as well. As I conclude, God loves us, but sees our world from a different perspective. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. But we need to remind ourselves, God is not, sorry, God is for us, not against us. So remind yourself, God is for you, not against you. God can meet your needs. How he meets those needs is a subject of faith. His view is higher than ours. Imagine living at this level of faith with him. We can. It's called faith. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. It says we live by faith and not by sight. I want to encourage you. Break free from the mundane and the mediocre. See the challenges of life to, to move into this exciting realm of faith. Watch as God moves on your behalf. There will be need. There will be need. But God is not taken by surprise. Not by this global pandemic or taken by surprise by the situations that are facing you today. He didn't cause it. He's not the author of it. But what I do know is that he has the ability to use this current situation for his purpose. We will be praying for you this week. We want you to know that we will be praying. We'll be praying for those that are on front line, those that are in hospital, not well. For those of you that may have needs, I want to encourage you, hit the button at the top of the screen. Fill in the form to connect with us. Tell us your story. We're here for you. I'm going to hand back to the team and they're going to give you an opportunity to respond to this message today. So from me and Denise, God bless you. You guys have a great Sunday and we look forward to seeing you real soon. Bye for now.